Good morning, everybody. This is Brian Caprice. I'll be hosting our Monday morning market breakdown today. Uh, welcome back. I see some of the people that were here last week as well. And remember, this is a reoccurring event that we're going to do every Monday to give you guys an early morning start. Uh, actually, today is one of the days why we do it early because we do have early news today. So I'll make sure to get you guys out of here well in advance so you can get your position set up. Um, just if, for any of the people that are new here today, they don't know who I am, I'll give you a quick rundown of who I am, just so you know where kind of my information and uh, everything's coming from. So I'm an instructor over Major League Trading, you guys may have heard of them, uh, and I'm also the co-founder of Major League Forex. I've been trading basically since 2001 time period, about 75% about of the way through the tech bubble is where I kind of got involved in the market, so it was a great time to learn with markets going down. Um, trade a few things, found currencies, fell in love with that. Um, a bit of a while ago, I ran into uh, Nadex and Binary Options and really just fell in love with it. I, I had a traditional options background, and when I saw binaries, I really liked the idea of it. Um, I liked it. One of the, the issues that I saw with just standard, you know, other asset trading was that I had to have an account over here, and I had to have another account over here, and then I had another account over here, where with Nadex, I was able to trade them all in one location. So I really started to um, kind of dedicate myself to helping other people learn how to trade, and particularly using Nadex options. Um, created two programs that are currently out right now, a 30 minute trader program, uh, as well as a five minute binary course. And that's been for traders that have full-time jobs and are very busy. Um, after being in the advisory um, kind of arena for a, a bit, um, I realized it's just, it's just better to do it yourself. So um, that's why I created these courses. Um, it is what it is, okay. Uh, you can see this is the family picture. Uh, the baby is now 10 months, she is growing. She's uh, not walking, but man, does she crawl all over the place. And uh, she's definitely daddy's little girl. Uh, and those are my two sons. Uh, I am definitely very busy. You guys can hear my voice is kind of a little little hoarse, and that has to do with some allergies, but also with some lacrosse. Um, we had we played on three different teams and uh, two games this weekend, and it was super windy on the East Coast yesterday. And uh, unfortunately, I don't know what it is with wind and sound, but I had to do some extra yelling, and my, my voice is paying for it today. So if it does go in and out, I promise, uh, you know, it will it'll come back in a second. So just stick with me. Uh, before we jump in, let me go through the Nadex risk disclaimer. So trading on Nadex involves financial risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. The information presented here is for information and education purposes only and should not be considered an offer or solicitation to buy or sell any financial instruments from Nadex or elsewhere. Any trading decisions that you make are solely your responsibility. And past performance is not necessarily indicative of uh, future results. Now, Nadex contracts are based on the underlying asset classes, including Forex, which we're going to cover today, stock index futures, commodity futures, and economic events. Now, trading can be volatile and investors risk losing their investments on any given transaction. However, and this is very, very important. However, the design of Nadex contracts ensures investors cannot lose more than, than the cost to enter the transaction, meaning you, no margin calls. You can't lose, you know, it's not like a futures contract where you put it on or it's not like shorting stock. Whatever you, whatever it costs you to put it the trade on, that's all you can lose. Very, very big point in trading Nadex. Now, Nadex is subject to U.S. regulatory oversight by the CFTC. It's a very big deal. Um, if you guys aren't sure what the CFTC is, go out there and see who else they regulate, okay? Now, with that being said, let's jump into the news for the week. Um, happy April Fool's Day. Um, that's not a, you know, it's not a joke. It is April Fool's today. I can't believe it's already uh, the fourth month into the year. Um, as far as the top major news of the week, okay, every week I am going to highlight the, basically the top three news, okay? Uh, there's obviously more news releases. I'll go through that real fast, too. Uh, these are three biggies. Uh, first one being uh, Friday. Uh, at 8 30. Uh, it's the first Friday of the month. You know what that means. It's non farm employment data. Uh, very, very big. Now, 8 30 is, is a big sweet spot because not only do we have US non farm data, we also have Canadian employment data. So there's definitely some trades to be taken out there on that day. Um, you know, there are some days where we don't have a big US move, but the Canadian move is larger. Uh, some days it just it does nothing. And then some days it absolutely explodes. And those are huge days um, in the markets. And those are the ones you want to take advantage of. So definitely keep that on your radar. Um, if you didn't know it, make sure you mark it off. Um, one recommendation I do have on this one is if you guys have, uh, if you use like Google Calendar or any type of online program, <clears throat> have it um, have it send you auto reminders. So it's a nice little trick um, just to make sure that you don't miss these because these are the biggest movers uh, in the currency markets besides obviously interest rate changes. Number two will be Tuesday uh, at 8.30 p.m. Okay, this is a nighttime trade. Uh, this is Aussie retail sales. So the Aussie and New Zealand have been absolutely great to trade at night. Um, there's no U.S. traders in the markets, but you're able to get on there. You're able to grab 40, 50 pips on some trades um, with rather small risk. Um, very, very nice setups. Risk to reward ratios are good. Um, been very, very good. Uh, I 
So I can't say enough about it, but uh, definitely check Australian retail sales tomorrow night at 8.30 p.m. Um, and then obviously number three would be this morning. Uh, at 10 a.m. we have ISM Manufacturing. There is news at 8.30, but I'm going to rank ISM Manufacturing just slightly higher uh, because the stock market is open. So if you're looking and you don't see a currency trade that you like, uh, particularly in the dollar yen, jump over and look at the indices. Um, manufacturing is a big deal. It's kind of um, kind of one of the, the defining factors of what's coming. Okay, um, if manufacturing orders are down, that typically will change estimates of companies moving into the future. Um, if it's really, really good, they may say, hey, listen, I don't think our earnings reports are as good as they should have been. Um, let's make sure we up this. Okay, so it kind of gives you a little bit of foreshadowing in the future, and uh, th that data has been mixed, and you know we can go through it. Um, with that being said, let me pull the news for the week across. Um, if you guys don't know, again, remember, go over to Daily FX. I'll go across over to Economic Calendars. Once you get to the Economic Calendars, it's going to tell you it will start giving you the breakdown, and I'll show you right here that retail sales, the first one coming in at 8.30, is coming in about an hour from now. Um, under the economic calendar, okay, when you go over here, um, actually, it's telling you there's two big ones, but retail sales is the first one. Scroll down, okay? Make sure that you change the time to the correct, um, you know, the correct um, time zone. Uh, that definitely can throw you off. Uh, also, go into filters. I also I remove Mexican peso because I obviously we're not trading that. I do keep China up there. Uh, I keep China up there because yeah, Chinese news will typically also affect the Aussie, okay? Because it's uh, export country. And then also remove flow. Uh, change the weekly view, and weekly view will kind of give you a breakdown of everything. So um, <clears throat> you can see we had all the Sunday night news already. Now we go to right here, and you can see that we have the news starting to come in now. You'll see there's some Eurozone news that's already passed, and um, this is what we're running into right now, okay? Uh, retail sales in one hour. And again, retail sales is one of those smaller percentage numbers. Um, the previous, it's actually expected to be uh, a little bit higher, right? Uh, if you guys just didn't know, the far right category is the previous, and then the center one is the forecast, okay? So what it's saying right now is that retail sales previously was 0.2%. It's supposed to be 0.3%. Um, <clears throat> And people just look at the the overall one. They don't look at the auto, and it's not as big. Now, going into 10 o'clock, this is where manufacturing and I said employment comes in. Um, again, you'll see it's it's slightly higher. You know, this is a number that has a history of missing. Okay, um, it's kind of like the weather. You can assume you know what it is, and then when it's here, it's different. Um, this is one that it's you know more or less it's it's got a high probability of miss. In a miss, this one is worth probably 40 to 50 pips, um, and it'll start the day off in whatever direction. Uh, it's also at 10 a.m., which is a very important time. For those of you that trade the futures markets, the two most common times when we have daily reversals are at 10 and at 10.30. So those are, you know, that, you know, that time combined with this news could definitely flip the market from where it was to, you know, where it's going to go the rest of the day. <clears throat> and then after that, it basically, it calms down. Um, this one right here is marked as high for Canada. And I don't know that I'd mark it as high. Um, no, and that takes us into Tuesday. Um, going to Tuesday, you can see durable goods in the morning. Uh, again, I wouldn't rank it as one of the top three. It's actually supposed to be down, so this could be a bit of a market mover, um, but I wouldn't rank it as far as the top three goes. Um, and again, they have this marked as medium because this ranks it with everything. But when you think about what's happening uh, tomorrow night, you know, um, you know, that makes a difference. Okay. Um, let's go into Wednesday. Um, Wednesday, we basically have the other aspect of ISM, the non-manufacturing services data. Um, <clears throat> I don't see this being as big a mover. Um, again, it is at 10, 10 a.m., but typically on Wednesdays, what everybody's focused on is oil, and oil is the big market mover. Um, that'd be you know a little bit after this, but you may get a little bit of a currency pop. Uh, ADP employment change, it sometimes has the ability to move it's a, if it's a big miss, okay? Um, you know, and they, you know, previous was 183, it's supposed to be here. Uh, it was actually a pretty decent miss last time. So again, it's a little bit early, it's 815, but that could be a potential one for a dollar yen trade as well, um, particularly over in the two hours. Now on Thursday, you'll see there's really not a whole lot. Um, you know, there's the ECB, you know, early in the morning, um, obviously it's just meeting notes, um, doesn't really give too much actual, you know, kind of event data. And then going to Friday, again, this is going to be a big one. You're going to see the non-farm employment change, the unemployment rate, as well as the Canadian news. And that's all stacked. Because look, basically from here down to here is all 8.30 news. So there is a lot of news. Um, and a lot of it's high quality, you know, high potential news um, all around the same time. So definitely something you want to be in there. And again, because of Nadex's, um, you know, defined risk going into the trade, 
um, very, very, you know, very, very big things that kind of target here. Okay. Um, all right. So with that being said, let's dive into, let's go look at some charts. Okay. Now what I'll do is I'll go over the pairs and we'll look for zones, um, basically for weekly positions or swing positions. Um, many of these are not overnight. So here's where we started. Um, also again, uh, let me bring this down. Hold on. All right. So I'll see again, if we look at this weekend, it actually gapped right up into this upper level kind of sell zone. All right. Now, this was something that we could have taken. Obviously, this trade is past, but you always want to look out for these things. You want to mark off gaps uh, uh, from the past. Okay. This one gapped and went higher and it pulled right back like we wanted it to. It didn't actually complete the gap, which, again, it can happen. Uh, again, this was a news kind of based uh, retrace. Um, Price has kind of come up. If you look on the higher time frame, this one on the right hand side is my 60 minute chart. If you look over on the left hand side, I can remove that because I drew the other line. Um, you can see on the four hour, we had this area of basin that we bounced off of and it actually got past it. Okay. Um, so this would have to move slightly higher into this area up here, right? Because this is the next level of basing above where the prior gap was. And again, this prior gap, it went right above it. So it technically had already been completely filled. Um, not surprised with the retrace on the lower level. So when I'm looking at this chart, we can see that price now has moved all the way, all the way back up top, right? Um, we'd been in this kind of sideways channel, right? Here's the selling at the top. Here's the buying at the bottom and the buying is held, right? It came up and pushed back down and now it's pushed back higher. So where we are right now on this daily, it's starting to, you know, I'd say breach the top 70, 80%. So we're starting to get a little bit more bearish biased on this one, right? Looking for kind of a flip over, a rollover a bit of sorts, right? Looking at the four hour, you can see again, we are in a level of base and we did go slightly higher and we see these descending candle wicks, okay? This one wick actually touched the last piece over here, right? So if I move this over, right, to there, right, we wanna get the bottom piece in. You guys can see actually from the prior kid, it got right up into this zone before it started to flip to the downside. So I am definitely more bearish on this, okay? Look at this one as well. We've had two chances to go higher. The second hump is less than the, this hump. You'll see a lot of people will most likely take the double top position here. And that's why you'll see price kind of bouncing up a bit. Um, this is a very, very common position. Uh, you'll see this kind of double hump push down and then ride back up again. Um, I'm leaving this red bar here because that's where the start of the gap was. Um, but if we get a push down, that's going to give me my confirmation. Um, I'm looking to take this one more of a, you know, a bearish position. Um, you could take this in a weekly bearish position. Um, there are some good strikes on that one. Uh, this is not one of the touch bracket pairs, so you won't be able to do this with a touch bracket. But as far as kind of, you know, taking this, there are weeklies on this one. Um, let me see real fast. I have, I have it up on another screen. Um, just want to make sure. That, um, yeah, there's a couple. Of, there's a few positions on this one for weeklies that aren't bad to the downside. Um, also, there are spreads on this one if you guys are looking to trade any spreads. Um, right now, with the indicative being 79.02, uh, you know we're right there. Um, unfortunately, we've moved a little bit too much from the ceilings of these positions. So, um, actually, I guess there's a 78.90 um, position. Go, you guys should go check that one out as well. It's not a bad one. Um, and again, remember anything, make sure that these are following your rules before you look, you know, before you take any of these trades. Um, so that's what I got on this one. I don't want to, you know, spend the entire time on this pair. Um, switch over to Aussie yen. Or I'm sorry, Aussie dollar. So Aussie dollar has kind of been a little bit more flatlined. Um, again, you can see that it has pushed higher. It's gap did not go quite as far. It did go to this level right here where we saw a base, right? So price came down, it kind of based sideways in this kind of a doji candle, and you'll see that price exploded out the bottom, okay? So if I was to take a box, um, again, these are nice little areas to mark off. You guys can see that's what we bounced off of. So very similar position. Uh, this one only has a 53 pip ATR, so a lot less movement per day um, versus the, the prior one, which is about 85. Uh, but similar situation, you know, prices come up, it's, you know, on the higher end of what we would call, you know, necessarily the, the curve. If this is the bottom, this is the top. Um, some of you guys out there, I know not everybody uh, is a FIB trader. Um, I don't actually use FIBs to trade, but what I'll do is I'll use their percentages to kind of draw, right? Um, when things are in, you know, the top, you know, if you take the top and bottom of the range, the top 30% is where I'm starting to look in, for sales in a sideways pattern. And again, this is definitely sideways. We are up in that range where we're starting to look for sales. And again, we have some basing here. You guys can see this is where the basing occurred. This kind of this base right here. 
if you mark this off here, okay, you can see that's what we've bounced off of. Okay, here's the here's the gap, you know, the gap initiation from Friday. Now again, this could definitely push back to the downside. So definitely more bearish on the Aussie uh, Aussie dollar. Um, you could be looking at a few things here as well. Uh, let's drop down to the euro pound. Now there was some, uh, there was definitely some pound news. Um, this week we definitely don't have a whole lot of Brexit, um, which is kind of a nice thing. All right, so um, we are still kind of wedged in between the two, you know, sell, buy and sell areas. This top area was a was a sell area. Um, I didn't change this. I'm sorry. Let me switch to the red. So this real quick. Um, that was kind of a sell area, and this was a buyer. And we talked about we had this level of basing. Um, it actually broke through, tagged the bottom from last week, came back up almost all the way to the top, actually. Um, if we move this down to where the start of this green was, it did touch. And now we're kind of back in the middle, okay? Um, I don't know last week. I think this was my last Thursday group that I put this one on here. So this was a trade um, we had set up. We had some basing. I believe we were up four to one on this one. Yeah, we were up four to one on this trade. It ran into this level of basing right here before it flipped and turned. Um, again, I don't know. This single wick was clearing. Um, we were more or less, I was, when we set the trade up, we expected to be clear to the bottom. Unfortunately, we didn't get it all the way down. We got, you know, about a, about a four to one on that trade, um, at least three. Uh, where we are right now, again, positions are collapsing. Uh, you can see the, the large wicks. Uh, it looks like prices attempted to move down. Again, we had an impulse correction, impulse correction, impulse corrective move. Uh, and if price starts to move down, again, downtrend, sideways, downward bias, downtrend set up because we are down with a pullback. So. Um, everything is saying that this one will continue to push down. Um, this week is not dominated with Brexit news like we had last week. Uh, the last three weeks actually have been Brexit, 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 and the markets have been paralyzed. Hopefully now this will help us return to normalcy. And um, I'm hoping with what we had over this weekend, um, again, Friday you can see is just absolute mess, up, down, up, down, up, down, people are confused. Um, you know, vote, no vote, extension, soft, this, figure it out. You know, they need to vote when they, they voted two weeks ago. A lot of confusion, <laughs> okay? Um, but I it looks like this wants to kind of push back down into this 85 area. Um, and again, I think this move right now is more based off the euro, not necessarily the pound. Um, I think the pound at this point is kind of in an exhaustion phase and trying to figure out really what it's going to do. I know there has been, uh, there, has mo there has been movement since yesterday, um, you know, pound up, you know, pound strength. Um, I think there's a lot of hope out there that, you know, the pound will be able to, you know, get itself together and move in a, in a productive direction. But I don't think a lot of this move with this euro pound pair, um, again, is necessarily just the pound. I think this is a little bit of euro weakness as well. So we're right in the middle. We're getting back down. Um, when we start getting back down, if you don't have it marked off already, um, 80, what is it? 84.80 is a big buy area. We've seen two great pushes back up from that area very sharply. I mean, it's barely entered the area and it's just launched itself high. So if this thing is able to come down about 100 pips, um, about 90 pips down, make sure you're starting to look, you know, look for longs this week. Um, that could happen maybe Tuesday, Wednesday time frame. Okay. Uh, let's go down to the next one, which would be uh, Euro Yen. So Euro Yen is one of those pairs that um, when it's good, it's good. When it's bad, it's slow. <laughs> you guys can see we had a very, very nice drop that we can you know, um, Took advantage of and that was about two i think we set this up about two weeks ago it was two mondays ago where we talked about we had seven days up no pullbacks looking for a pullback and it went down and then one candle basically took it over at the time we've had a little bit more basing if you drop it down to lower time frames similar situation we had what's called a single wick against the wall or even a wick over wick price came back up on this large retrace this is what i would call a racetrack right not a lot of resistance in here um you know those are typically big runners Price came up and did snag the one wick in there and drop back down, went a little bit lower, basically causing a trap. As soon as it breaks the low, people are jumping in. It caused a trap. It started the pushback higher. Again, we just bounced off of this. If I continue this to the side, same trade. We just hit it, um, and we are actually, what, about 37 pips down from that flip. Now, this pair does move 79 pips in a day, although sometimes this one gets slow. Okay, It's a weird pair in that the dollar yen is more or less a proxy for the U.S. stock market. This one, it's kind of weird. It's based off the Euro news, but then it incorporates the yen in, which kind of fluctuates back and forth with the dollar. So a little bit of a weird pair, but again, similar situation. I am definitely a little bit, I'm definitely more bearish at this point. Again, you guys can see on this side at the top, if you look at these, these little splotches along the side over here. So what this is doing is this is looking back and looking for unfilled orders. 
And if you look at the top, you can see there's a bunch of, un, you know, a lot of uh, orders at the top. Unfilled orders mean if price hits that area, it's most likely going to push or it has a high potential to turn it and flip in the other direction. Not a lot of blue in the bottom, right? It's kind of spread out, you know, big gray area over here. So definitely more bearish this one in the near term. Um, looking back, the gap occurred over here uh, at uh, 124.37, um, about about 30 pips from where we are. But the way that the zone was formed, you can see a lot of these wicks down here. It's like a one of those like hairy caterpillars. Um, this is the potential to head back down to this 133.60 area, kind of pushing back down. So even weekly, I think I'm bearish on this one as well, um, and that could be something fun to take care, you know, to take advantage of. Again, weekly options. Um, again, not a touch bracket. Okay. Um, uh, you could actually do this one with a spread too. Uh, let's drop down to Euro dollar. Now, Euro dollar, just so you guys know, Euro dollar uh, is one of the touch brackets. Um, oh, I didn't hit on this one. Hold on. All right. All right. So, some of you may be wondering what the heck this thing is over here. Uh, I think I started this with you guys, and then I did it with the um, with my nighttime um, chart schools. Um, this is what's called a measured move. I don't know if you guys have ever used this before. Uh, actually, it's, uh, a CMT, if you guys know what they are, um, Chartered Market uh, Technician, he uh, he told me this, and it's kind of like a, a hidden secret that you don't really hear too many people talking about, but it's talking about measured moves. And I basically drew this high off the prior moves, right? You'll see that this is a, a pretty common distance. Um, we, we shaved a little bit off as it was getting a little bit lower. And actually, I guess I could have drawn it a little bit farther um, there and there. You guys see, isn't that interesting how that works out? Take this move here, this one went a little bit farther, this one went a little bit farther, right? And there's the move, and there's the prior measured move, right? And it literally went right off the bottom of it. So uh, it's a hit, it's one of those hidden tricks, and it's something, again, we had such big movement up, real no, not really any big reason, um, we took it back to the downside. Now, um, this was on a smaller time play down here, we can move this down here, okay? So didn't get all the way to the bottom. All right, so this is again what this is showing us is this is showing us the euro weakness. Uh, remember in the last in the euro pound I talked about how it's moving, but I don't I don't think it's necessarily pound strength. I think it's more dollar or yen weakness. I'm sorry, euro weakness. That's what I'm saying. Now I will say at this point I am still a little bit more bearish. I think we have the ability to come down a little farther. Although I'm not jumping into positions right now, I'm going to let it ride its last 30 pips down into this buying area. So. This is a very, very strong zone. Uh, obviously, the wick is a little bit lower, but this here was basically the near-term low, okay, on the four-hour. It's what you see over here as well. This is what initiated this basically 200 pip move to the top side. So there's obviously a reason why price turned here. Um, again, it spiked up, based, and then you know that started the uh, the, the, new, the new trend. So I'm looking for long positions when it gets back down into this uh, 111.99, 112 area. Um, Anything close to one, you know, 112, 111, 110 are very big psychological areas because as soon as you start getting low, you know, breaking lows to the downside, the first thing that the news, you know, people on the news start talking about is, is the euro going to go to parity? Does it have the potential to go to parity? It just comes in. I mean, we're obviously far from it right now, but uh, it, it starts coming in there when it starts getting that low. Okay. Again, any type of European slowing this week will also continue to push this down. Um, but again, we start running into big psychological areas. You start seeing central banks get involved. You start seeing hedge funds, um, large currency mutual funds, and overseas they start jumping on board crazy when it starts getting near these areas. So it, you know, technically it may it may look like a great short and anything else it would be, except in currency land where you know you have central banks involved. So for me, I'm waiting for this to go a little bit lower and then I'll be looking to get long. Uh, it's not a huge. I wouldn't say it's a huge week um, for European news. Um, it's kind of actually, you know, we have some this morning and besides that, yeah, there's monetary policy meeting on, on Thursday, but besides that, I wouldn't say there's too much. So this is going to be more driven by us data. And again, today would be the day we get some, you know, we get some bad us data with core sales. Um, if that misses or manufacturing is down, that's, what's going to send this pop back up most likely into this probably 113, 24 area. All right. Uh, areas to mark off obviously are this top section. This isn't a bad one here. This kind of pullback and drop. If you want to mark off 113.70 to 113.90, not a bad area to look at. And then also mark, mark off this top as far as potential bounces to the top side. All right, next pair. Uh, let's see. Uh, Euro yen. I'm sorry, not Euro yen. I'm so stuck on Euro yen today. Pound yen. Okay. Pound yen has reached back up again. This is something that I had marked off for my group last week. We were looking to kind of take this piece back over. And we got within what? 
three pips of it to the top side. Um, we were looking for it to bounce. And again, you're supposed to front run your positions for targets. And again, you would have most likely hit. Um, again, this was drawn off of our daily. So this one, I thought I'd change it for you guys. We drew this, uh, to, I want to say like three weeks ago now. Actually, probably longer than that. We talked about it supporting this, basically this this major area of support, right? 144.35 to 143.80. You can see hit here, went all the way up, hit the daily top side. Came all the way back down, hit it again. Came about halfway through, right? Before turning and flipping and hit and came back up again. We're starting to see consolidation, right? Here is the, the bigger channel, right? And then here is kind of the minor channel, right? That we are stuck within, okay? Um, and I say minor, but we're still talking about, you know, 200 pips top to bottom. So, you know, can be large. This one has 153 pip ATR. So there's a lot that you can trade in this one. Um, again, looking for that completion on the top side. Um, where we are right now, this is from a different draw from before. Well, actually, I guess it's not. It's um, That draw was actually from, is that single wick right there? switch this over real quick um there that's kind of what we're looking for um to the top side uh, this was going to be our target this is a selling zone um 145.70 would be you know a place that we can sell um we're so close on the bottom side and when i say close i say percentage wise i mean yes obviously it's you know 100 and something pips to the bottom um this one because it is it has such potential to be, have violent swings because there's not a lot of pound news this week, I think this one will obviously start to consolidate it, but people are tired. This this is a lot, right? Back and forth. Um, again, this is a swing of 340 pips, top to bottom in like, you know, one day. You know, here's one, here's one, here's one. So a lot of movement. Um, I'm looking to go long when we get into this low section, this 144 area. Definitely looking to go short from this 147.70 area. Um, until that time on the, on the smaller time frames. I need things to kind of level out a little bit. You guys can see that this basing level sideways um, obviously held uh, twice. Um, we have one area above it. We have descending wicks to the downside. So there's definitely some selling pressure above this one. If we get up really above 146, we'll be looking for some type of confirmation. Um, on the on the on really kind of the the smaller time frame on like an hourly, um, probably looking to go. Maybe looking to go short here. It depends what the U.S. news does. Uh, if the U.S. news is really good, um, I think this is already going to start dropping on us. If the U.S. news is bad and it pops up and hovers, then I could potentially be looking for a short for the week. Uh, where it is over here on a weekly position, I, I'd like to get the, you know, if we could get up to here on like a new spike, then I could potentially look, be looking to go short. Um, but I want it to go higher. It's kind of, we're starting to get into the middle of no man's land. And this kind of 20 to 30% in between these two zones, no man's land for me. Okay. Uh, let's drop down and go to pound dollar. Pound dollar, similar situation. We are smack dead in the middle. Uh, you can see we had drawn this kind of what I would say is a bit of a racetrack, although there's definitely some, you know, potholes or speed bumps in the way that I'd be very cautious about. Um, again, we're right into a cell area right now. Really not much for me. Um, uh, being, being again in the middle, I'm not super excited right now about this one. I'd like to see some nice movement today. Um, if we start to push back lower, there are short-term plays that you could take back down to this 128, you know, 128.50 area, a buying area. Okay, right now nothing that I potentially level on this one. Uh, dollar CAD, I mentioned this is going to be a big news release. Uh, you can see Dollar CAD. Um, here is the start of the gap from last week. We literally dropped down and we are now basing off of it. We the sell mark was from this prior kind of pullback, right? Um, that occurred again. We had this one set from last week. If you guys were actually from two weeks ago, if you guys were around. Price pulled up last week, gave us a little bit of a fake out, came back up, and now we are, oops, I just moved the zone. Um, we are about 87 pips deep into that move from where it occurred. Um, again, occurred from Friday. I am looking at this. So we had this set. Obviously, this completed all the way back down again. We took just a tiny little bit of heat, a couple of pips, um, and hit this full bit. The fact that this is more or less in one candle, if we can get a break above really 133.70, um, I'd be looking at something similar, um, something around this range, right? And again, this is just kind of a ballpark. You'd want to probably front run it a bit. Um, you know, whenever you see these long kind of racetracks, we want to overcome that. We want to kind of play that retrace. Um, so that's kind of what I'm looking at. You guys can see it on, on two different charts. So um, 
that could be definitely some type of a weekly position as well. And again, strong US news will drive us right back up again. Okay. Um, let's see what else we got. Uh, dollar Swiss is the epitome of kind of slower. <laughs> thing is like it's kind of rolling over it's kind of not rolling over it's really just stuck within this little kind of time frame a bit right here um nothing i love in this one again i'd like I'd, if it get if it can get back up into this kind of um 199.87 area i'd probably be looking to short it um but it's got a bit of room to run before we get there so mark it off in your charts but for me i'm not necessarily interested in that yet definitely not in a weekly position i think we're gonna have more of this kind of sideways kind of meandering so um, there are better trades out there for that. Um, with that being said, let's drop down and look at this one. So this position on the daily did finally breach the top. And this is, you know, I like these trade setups. Um, we had a top selling zone. We hit it. We respected it. We pushed back down again. Then we drove through. Now, we gapped above the zone. Okay. A couple of different ways to look at these. When they gap above, a lot of times they will pull back and use that as kind of a takeoff point. Right now, it's kind of holding. And again, it's waiting for U.S. news. U.S. news is in 30 minutes, the first round, and then the next one is at 10 today. So that's going to tell us a lot of where this potentially can go. Now, uh, I still got to take a picture of this. So I need, I'm sorry if this seems a little bit busy over here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drag another triangle. So what I'm looking at, oops, not that. Uh, let me get the right one here. There we go. So here's an area where I am going to be potentially looking to sell if we get a new spike up to there. So different people play news in different ways. Um, I, there's two ways I'll, you know, if I'll look at and analyze candles between five and 15 minutes before a news release, and I'll look to see what price action is doing before I place a trade for somewhat of a breakout. Love Nate X positions for that. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely love them. After the news comes out though, when that position's over with, right, win, lose, or draw, then I'm looking for retraces of positions. This is one of those, you know, setups, right, that I'm looking for, okay? We have about 43 pips, which manufacturing ISM can definitely move the market 43 pips. If price is able to rally up into here based off of news, I am looking for a retrace most likely in the other direction. Now, it's cool because we are in time of a range now where you can not only jump into five minute binaries, but you can also jump into the two hours. So there's a lot of things you can use to trade releases like this. And the fact that we have an 830 and a 10, a lot of stuff you can do. Um, even if you jump over on the call spreads, if you guys are familiar with, you know, the call spreads, there are, there are two hour call spreads. So at eight, you know, at 10 o'clock, if we can get a rally up into a sell zone like this, maybe even a little bit above, you know, we can potentially have out of the money ceilings, you know, printed in our, say our 10 to 12 uh, call spread. So if you're not trading call spreads, you're not familiar with it. A news release like today is a good way to try those. Again, we have touch brackets as well. The touch brackets are more on a weekly position. Um, touch brackets are off. Actually, they're not bad today. Um, that's 111. Let's see. Indicative right now is 110.97, so right around 111. Um, there's a position right now that uh, the top side of the touch bracket is 111.45 with the downside at 108.49. I'm sorry, 108.95. So um, actually, I don't. That's not a bad position. If we can get a, a little bit more of a confirmation, again, we're getting it on the, the 60 minute. Uh, we're starting to get over here. Um, actually, if price pops up, this is 111.40. If we can hit this zone, respect it, and not break that touch bracket that's at 111.45, because it's so close to the top side, it will be rather cheap to get in. That could be a nice one that will last through the week to, to go to the downside. And again, you'll have very small protection on the top. If you get busted for a small amount, hey, that's trading. It, it is what it is. But that's not a bad one to, to you know, if you're again, if you're new with touch brackets, go try that one as well. Uh, so this one has a lot of possibilities. Uh, you know, again, the 60 pip ATR, not the biggest mover, but you know, definitely some things that we can trade on this one with news in 26 minutes and then also in two hours from now. Okay. Uh, with that being said, if you guys have any questions, I'm going to mix it up a little bit this week. Um, what I want you guys to do is, if you do have questions, um, I want you to head over to our website. I want to make sure we keep these things brief. Um, if you guys are unfamiliar with our website, go over to MajorLeagueForex.com, okay? Uh, we use communication uh, communication program called Discord. Um, if you're unfamiliar with it, it's a chat program that sits on your desktop. You can put it on your phone. Microsoft created it. Uh, it's used by gamers, but we use it a lot because it 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 links to everything. It, it works well. 
go over there, hit the score, get involved, uh, go to Major League Forex. If you have questions, you can email me directly at support at majorleaguesforex.com. Or once you're on Discord, you can send me a direct message. This is what you put in, MLFX, Brian, number 1495. You can shoot me messages. Uh, with that, it concludes today. You guys can actually, and all our channels are free. You can jump into them. You can ask questions if you like. Um, our students are definitely willing to help you guys with anything else. If you have questions specific about touch brackets or anything else Nadex related, go ahead and give Nadex support a call as well. So I'll see you guys same time next week. And thank you for joining us today. Good luck with the news releases this morning. And I will see you guys next week. Take care.